Good morning, friends. Robin here from Cheese from Scratch. So today I'm going to show you guys how to strip out your cow. So when you're milking, you've finished milking, well, not finished milking, you're almost done milking, and you want to get every last bit of that milk out of your cow so that you're not leaving in any, any milk in there that's going to grow bacteria and cause mastitis and cause all sorts of other problems. And also just to be able to get that creamy, nice hind milk because the end milk is the creamiest milk and you want to be able to get all of that milk out. So when I first learned how to milk a cow, I would like lay awake at night worrying that I did not strip my cow out properly. And it was like really anxiety causing for me. Like I was always so worried that I was going to cause my cow to have mastitis because I didn't strip her out properly. And when you're not calf sharing and you don't have the security of having a calf on there to make sure that that calf is getting all of that hind milk out, you really have to know how to properly strip out your cow. So I'm going to take you down to the barn with me this morning and show you how I do that. So let's go. I always drive down to the barn in my car. I like load my milk buckets into it and drive down. It's not actually that far from the house. Like I can see Suki from my kitchen window, but there's like quite a hill to get down there. So I always just drive down, make it easy on myself. And she's always waiting for me at the gate. Come on in, Suki. How's it going? Good morning. Come on in, friend. Okay, you probably guessed I'm not actually down in the barn. <laughs> I'm sitting at my computer talking to you guys and showing you footage of the many times that I have milked. So, stripping out your cow is an important step in milking because it's very important to make sure that that old milk is not sitting in the udder causing bacterial growth leading to mastitis. You can hear Gus in the background here. So all cows have different letdowns or will let down differently at different times. This can be a physiological thing or a psychological thing. Most cows that are calf sharing always keep some milk back for their calf. It's always that hind milk, meaning it's always the creamiest. That's why when you're calf sharing, can you hear me over that? <laughs> That's why when you're calf sharing, you won't get as good a cream line as when you're not. As I said before, the benefit of calf sharing is that you really don't have to worry about stripping your cow completely out because the calf will do that for you and they're really good at it. Cows can also decide not to let down for you for other reasons. Maybe they're hormonal that day, maybe it's different in their living situation or their milking situation is a little bit different, or maybe they're just having a bad day. Jersey sass is a thing. As I said though, letdown is also cow specific and influenced by physiology. I have had cows before that I'm able to milk them almost completely out and strip out for only the last few streams. Suki, however, does not let down like that. I'm able to full hand milk her for most of the milking, but the last five, something, sometimes 10 minutes is typically me stripping her out. So I'm calling stripping out when you can no longer physically get the milk out efficiently with full hand milking. When you have to take that teat between your fingers and strip, 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 strip to get the last of the milk into the bucket. At first when I started milking Suki, you can see here I full hand milk. Full hand milking is quick, it's easier on your wrists, stripping out can be hard on your wrists and can eventually cause carpal tunnel. It is easiest when you are learning how to milk to figure out how to do the stripping technique. But for long term milking, you really want to be practicing that full hand milking technique as much as you can. And it's so much of a brain activity, just figuring out how you actually need to do that. So you can go and check out my How to Milk a Cow video. Video, um, on my YouTube channel. It's great and it talks about these things a little bit more in depth. So you're full hand milking, you're full hand milking, but eventually you're going to find that you need to do a strip out for one stroke. That brings more milk down, full hand milk, full hand milk, strip out, full hand milk. This lets you know you're getting closer to that strip out stage when you can no longer get a proper stream of milk with full hand milking. This is where our tutorial begins. So I strip out between my thumb and my pointer fingers and I hold my other fingers away so I don't spray them with milk. You'll find at this point that your stream of milk is much more efficient. 
than if you were trying to full hand milk at this point. As I said before, the step will be longer or shorter depending on your cow's physiology and what is going on in their head that day. Do they want to hold that milk back or are they going to let it go easily? As you strip out, you'll feel and see a few things. At first, you will notice that the milk you are stripping out is coming out in nice, heavy, thick streams. Remember, this is the hind milk, and it is the creamiest. This is usually where our cat Orange Susan shows up. I think he knows that the creamy stuff comes last. As you strip out, you'll be able to strip, strip, full hand milk, strip, but eventually it's just going to be strip, strip, teenier stream, strip, strip, spit. You will feel the change in the teeth. It almost collapses in your hand. You can almost always get one last spit. Once I get a few spits in a row, I finish milking up all the other teeth and then I do a round robin and go back to all the teeth. Milk will have accumulated in them and you should get some good streams, but it will only be a few and then you're back to spits or nothing. Your cow usually knows when she's almost milked out. She may start to get fidgety or swat her tail at you if you're trying too hard. I can't think of that it's too com comfortable to have someone pull on dry teeth. So if you're working really hard to get a teeny spit, call it good. To know when my cow is stripped out, the first thing I'm looking for is that I can only get those teeny spits. But the next thing I'm assessing is how her bag feels. If you're new to owning a cow or you're on the market for one, I always recommend that you go during milking time. Take a look at her udder when it's been milked out. This is your baseline. All udders look different. Some still hold some fullness after they've been milked out. Suki, for example, in the upper part, she still feels quite full. She's kind of a pear-shaped udder when she's milked out. She's loose at the bottom, full at the top. Whereas Rainbow, our old cow, she would be almost loose completely throughout the bag. So go, when you're buying a cow, go and go when she's milked out, figure out what that baseline is. And that's really gonna help you to feel comfortable. So this look at the bag technique is great, but when you have a cow that is newly postpartum, it kind of goes to crap. So cows hold a lot of edema in their udders postpartum, and this can make you feel confused. This edema can last up to a month, but typically it subsides by week two. I think a lot of the strip out confusion that people have comes from the fact that most often people new to milking cows are milking newly postpartum cows. In these cases, don't worry about udder feeling, worry about if you can or can't get milk out anymore. Edema will also make getting that milk out more difficult, your cow will be tender, you're new to milking, you'll be sore and stressed yourself, it just comes with the territory. So do your best and try not to stress out. If you ever need guidance, shoot me a message on Instagram or comment here, I love to help people feel more confident. This pretty much concludes our strip out video, other than I just wanted to touch briefly on those bad days when you're not capping when you're not calf sharing and your cow won't let down. We all have them, hopefully not too frequently, but we all have them. They can be really frustrating and my best of advice I can give you is try your best, but sometimes you will get to the point where you, you have tried and tried, but here Gus, he's having a tape crisis. We'll get to the point where you've tried and tried, but all you can get is spits. This is where Dynamint Cream is really awesome. Throw some on proactively, work to figure out what the problem is, and come back next milking with optimism that it's going to go better. Milk cows can be really get their tails in a bunch about certain things. So when you work to kind of mitigate the risk for mastitis because you're not able to get your cow completely milked out, there's just no way you can do it. No matter what everyone says, sometimes there's just absolutely no way you can yeah. do it. So mitigate your risk for mastitis by hitting that udder with dynamite cream and make situational changes to help your cow feel like letting down is a good option for next time. So whether that is changing something in the milking area, maybe they're just in a bunch because they're coming into heat and that's just going to be that but next time it's not going to be that so just do your best that's all you can do thank you guys for watching this video tell me below if you have a milk cow were you worried when you first started out about whether you're stripping your cow out properly what made you feel better or more confident um, if you're new to milking or learning all you can before you bring a cow into your family read the comments below and see if anyone's commented something really useful because that's awesome to kind of create community around this 
And also, what are your fears? Let me know below. I love hearing the kind of content you need to see and creating content specifically for your needs. Hit the subscribe button while you're there, and I will see you guys back next Monday with a new video on Cheese From Scratch YouTube channel where I talk homestead cheese making, milk cows, dairy processing, and so much more. Bye guys!